Now, a former aide of Vladimir Putin has said that the Russian leader's popularity is plummeting and that he may choose an heir sooner rather than later to avoid being toppled by a furious population. Although this theory has been disputed by some experts, just how popular is Putin right now? Or is there any way we can really know that? How long will he either choose to remain in power or be allowed to remain in power? Joining me now to talk about this is Noah Buckley, Assistant Professor of Political Science at Trinity College in Dublin, specialising in Russian politics and authoritarianism. Noah, good morning and welcome. Good morning. So what do you make of those reports that uh, there might be forces massing against him either in the political class or even among the population? I really think they're wishful thinking, unfortunately. I think there's, there's no centers of power who can really compete with Putin at this point. He's eliminated everyone who could be popular or could uh, really form any sort of group that would, that would uh, rise up against him. So I think uh, it's, re- it's really wishful thinking that he's going to be replaced or that he's going to be pushed out. And I think that that fits with what we see where the population really supports him, the population likes him, and that's despite or uh, in part because of the war. Um, and uh, I think the idea that, that he's going to be replaced, that he would step down or that there would be any sort of movement against him by the, in the public mm. is... is it's not something that I see happening anytime soon. Now, the, 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 there's, is there any way of knowing? I mean, there will be in elections, but people will say, oh, should, you know, it would not be worth your while taking the risk of voting for someone other than uh, Putin or his acolytes. I mean, this popularity, do you believe it's actually genuine? Is it informed or is it ill-informed, and, but nonetheless genuine? I think it's genuine, um, <clears throat> but 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 maybe fragile in the in the long term. I think in the short term, um, people still really support Putin for a number of reasons, for for growing the economy uh, very successfully over the last 20 years uh, and for making, I guess you could say, making Russia great again. Um, and so I think it is genuine, but it's it's fragile in the sense that as soon as it starts to falter in a, in a more serious way, uh, then people start to realize that they're they're supporting someone who nobody else supports or who doesn't really have any sort of deep sense of connection to the people. And so that can fall away very quickly. Um, I mean, his rise to power was in- incredibly swift and also quite contrived. I mean, he was designated the heir apparent or, you know, the deputy, um, was it president at the time he was the prime minister prime minister yeah. at the time uh, and then suddenly he's all powerful um, trying to understand the psychology of a man who actually sees very clearly that in order to control the population you've got to limit the freedom of media you've got to limit uh, political freedom yeah absolutely he's done very well at sort of controlling and constraining the information that i think most russians uh, receive and also uh, eliminating other possible sources of power and other groups or people that the population, the public, um, could rally around. So there are no other popular figures, really, besides him in the political arena. One of uh, the pieces I've been reading over the last couple of days uh, suggests that the Russian economy is actually quite fragile. I mean, um, they don't make everything they need. They used to be importing masses of consumer goods and components uh, to make the things that they did manufacture. Um, we see how the you know gas as a weapon this winter has not been as potent as it might have been because of the mild winter and so on and so forth, uh, and that the Russian economy might suddenly implode. What do you think? We've been waiting for some sort of implosion since the war started. I think it's, it's again, a more of a medium term, long term uh, thing. Certainly the Russian economy is weak and it's getting weaker, um, but it does have a resilience there that they're able to import goods from China, from India. They're able to export some amount of oil and uh, gas uh, around the world. So I don't think it's going to collapse completely anytime soon. Um, It'll be able to um, sort of stumble along um, with the support of the, the natural resources for, for quite yeah. a while. Now, what about uh, uh, people becoming maybe more powerful than Putin would like? And we're talking about, say, the head of the Wagner Group and uh, the, the, the uh, very wealthy man who is the proponent of that group. Um, is Putin threatened from people who might be his friends? 
No, he's not. He uh, he holds all the cards, really, and he selects who has power and sort of doles out that power um, to the people who he trusts, and which is a very small circle. Um, so the days of, uh, you know, the 2000s, when there were other groups, there were oligarchs, there were rich people, there were um, people within government who could potentially sort of threaten um, Putin's uh, authority, those are long gone. And it's really, it's, it's just his friends and his sort of inner circle that uh, yeah. has any sort of power. And, and can the population generally be uh, given uh, enough wealth, if you like, uh, consumer wealth and so on, to, to keep them happy? I think uh, for for the for now, yes. I mean, people are living much better than they were in the 1990s under Yeltsin or in the 2000s, um, and um, people are willing to put up with a lot um, if they see their country as um, you know being important on the world stage and stable, and uh, if they see some sort of you know future for themselves and their families. Now the body bags, um, you can't hide that many uh, funerals, so. How might that impact on him? Or are these kind of disposable people? I think, well, I think he certainly views them as disposable. Um, you know, people with no voice and their families having yeah. little enough voice. Yeah. So therefore, uh, the wave of protests that afflicted the United States, for example, uh, during the course of the Vietnam War, yeah. unlikely to erupt in Russia. Potentially, I mean, it, it could happen, but uh, I also don't see there's not enough body bags. It's not... Uh, known about enough and people are very happy to interpret this as you know these are martyrs fighting for Russia against the entire you know Western world is how it's often portrayed and so you know these are people who give their lives um, for the good of the country uh, for now um, potentially mm -hmm. if, there, if if things get bad enough then that could sort of fall away very quickly yeah uh, uh, people have very short memories because obviously during the height of the Soviet Soviet era everything from the West uh, was regarded as malign in some way but then as soon as they got the chance uh, I mean I remember going to the gum store at the time of the, um, the, the the Gorbachev era during perestroika and glasnost and it was a dump and now it's high-end fashion and all of that until those particular lines decide to close their shops. But um, they embrace the Western way very, very quickly, did they not? Yeah, it's really sort of a, a two-sided thing. On the one hand, they're happy to you know, speak about how, how evil or how uh, decadent the West is and all the mistakes that the West is making. But on the other hand, you know, everybody wants to go to France uh, for, for holidays and... Um, and everybody wants to import the nice, you know, cheeses from from Italy. So it's really a two-sided yeah. sort of thing. Now, uh, Putin, I don't know. He uh, seems to be someone who is far-sighted in the sense that the way he controlled the media and uh, dispatched all the political opposition. Does he have a view of his own end game? I mean, he can be president for a long, long time. He's got this billionaire's palace up in the Black Sea. Um, one suggestion is that he would choose his successor so he could retire safely there, uh, free from the fate of a Gaddafi or the Ceausescus. I mean, is he thinking about that end game? It's hard to say. Only only he knows really what what the future um, has in in store for him. But um, I do think he's he's probably thought about it, but he's keeping his cards very close to his chest. And he has to, because any successor who has any sense that they're going to be the successor um, is is a potential threat to him. And so he is doing everything he can to keep everyone in the dark, absolutely everybody, about who might follow him up. And I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, I don't know how many children he has, but uh, they, they, none of them uh, appear to be lined up for political office. Uh, do they need it, of course, with uh, uh, riches beyond the dreams of avarice? I don't think so. They, we don't know very much about uh, his children. Um, we know that he has two daughters, um, and they are very well set up these days, making plenty of money and um, very successful in Moscow. Um, so. I don't think uh, he has any intention of keeping it within the family, um, but it is a challenge to find someone who's uh, not too old to uh, succeed him potentially, and who is loyal to him, his family, and his entourage. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, he, he's uh, brought about something where he even should he retire becomes senator, a senator for life, and immune from any kind of political punishment. 
It's a possibility. Uh, he's probably looking towards looking at countries like Kazakhstan for this sort of example where he could serve as sort of a father of the nation. Um, unfortunately for him, I guess, uh, that hasn't worked so well for Nazarbayev in Kazakhstan. And so he's probably wondering how he can really retire in some sort of safe way and maintain some authority and sort of keep an eye on things uh, without being swept to the side mm -hmm. or worse. Well, it's fascinating, but uh, wishful thinking uh, to imagine that he might go anywhere, anytime soon. Noah Buckley, Assistant Professor of Political Science at TCD, specializing in Russian politics and authoritarianism. Thank you very much.